Uh, moving on, we have next talk by Mahima Malik. Okay, uh, so that's a talk on mapping river use in urban areas. A little about Mahima. Mahima is a research associate with Center for Policy Research. She works with the Scaling City Institutions for India. Um, her research interests pertain to understanding social relations that produce different kinds of spaces and settlements. She's here to talk about yeah. uh, the vex spatial dynamics of Yamuna Pushta, which is a term used loose, loosely to refer to the ecological uh, sensitive space yeah. around ri River Yamuna in Delhi. Over about a year now at Ambedkar University, Delhi. Um, through my presentation today and the ethnographic data that I've collected so far in my work, um, I hope to pose some questions to the mapping community here on how a reverse geography is perceived by the communities in a rapidly urbanizing world. Um, to take you very quickly to the structure of my presentation, uh, part one of my presentation will give us an overview of Yamana's official territory in Delhi. Part two will talk about the selected community, which is a group of small farmers, uh, and uh, the challenges that they are facing in the process of urbanization. Part three will discuss a little, little bit about my research findings, and I'll quickly move on to the concluding remarks. Now to talk about Yamuna's geography in official maps, uh, Yamuna's course in Delhi is actually about 22 kilometers long, mainly falling between two barrages, uh, namely Okhla Barrage in the south and Wazirabad Barrage in the north. This 22 kilometer stretch is considered to be one of the most polluted stretches of any river, not only in India, but across the world. However, the focus of my work is not the reverse course in the city, but the entire, uh, the entire expanse as it is represented in official cartographic uh, maps. For instance, the image on the right, uh, the image on the right gives us a zonal map of Yamuna, which is specific to the Yamuna's landscape under master plan of Delhi. Now, I am trying to problematize the green expanse that we see in the map. Um, and what does this green expanse hide about social realities in Yamuna's landscape? There are a range of informal settlements uh, that are considered and termed as encroachments upon Yamuna's floodplains that do not make their way into these official maps. Um, uh, that make their way into these official maps. And this is the focus. Now, in this process of invisibilization, what often gets invisibilized is not only the physical location of these settlements, but also the relationship that the communities have had with this space for over generations now. Talking about themes that exist in literature very quickly, uh, literature discusses the limitations in institutional mapping processes of Yamuna, uh, talking about political and economic interests that have entered mapping uh, processes. For example, Falman talks about how the land use pattern around Yamuna has been changed by the DDA, Delhi Development Authority, time and again in contravention to its own previous master plans, only to invite private capital and make the floodplains a real estate property. In Apart from planning authorities, we also have the Supreme Court, who has been a major uh, player in setting up administrative geography in the uh, who has been a major uh, player in setting up Yamuna's administ administrative geography in the cap capital city. Now, at the heart of these uh, scholarly engagements is actually a critique of contemporary riverfront development projects that actually serve the gaze of a select middle class population. This middle class aesthetic would rather have a string of jogging parks, recreational spots, and um, meditation centers around the river largely oblivious to the relationship and the, uh, and the very long uh, history of dependence of the user communities around Yamuna. Despite literature being available, what we still do not know is what is the nature of social relationship between Yamuna's user communities and the river. Who are these user communities after all and what is the nature of their river-based dependence? In addressing uh, these similar questions, my focus is on a very small user community and a microsite in North Delhi, uh, which is famously called as MKT Colony. Now, I'll be actually talking about a small group of 28 farmer families who inhabit and cultivate Yamuna's western banks in North Delhi, uh, which is represented in the color, in the patch, in the green patch on the map. The MKT farmers are migrants from uh, Raibareli and Pratabgarh districts from Uttar Pradesh. 
to talk a little bit about the social history of this site, uh, the first traces of any kind of agricultural production on this site uh, dates back to mid-1960s when the DDA itself uh, made a temporary allotment to these, uh, to a small uh, cooperative society, to a small cooperative society of farmers which went by the name Jagatpur Society. The society farmers, however, did not cultivate the land on their own. They let, uh, let it out to tenants who cultivated it on their behalf. In turn, the tenants paid a rent which is locally called Jama uh, to society members. However, so the allotment didn't, uh, expired in 1969, but it was never renewed. Uh, cultivation on the banks and this kind of rent sharing dynamics continue to date uh, in the landscape. Now coming to the present, um, this community has been receiving continual threats of eviction uh, in order to provide a beautified setting to the signature bridge that lies not even like within, not even like half a kilometer away from this set settlement. Uh, in September this year, a petition reached the High Court of Delhi, which was filed by these farmers, uh, pleading the authorities for any kind of rehabilitation measures to be taken up before the eviction actually takes place. While the case is still subject is before the High Court of Delhi, no stay order was granted to the farmers. On September 14th, as a result, the Sutmans and the uh, farmed plots were all bulldozed by the DDA. Now, having tracked personally the court proceedings, um, I'd like to take you through some of the comments that were made by the DDA that actually uh, raised some fundamental issues on how technocratic uh, circles view a reverse landscape in a city. The DDA council, for example, remarked, this land is not proper land, neither waters nor land. The hutments do not even look like permanent settlements. These are only seasonal encroachments and therefore they need to be evicted. Now this kind of a view is actually symbolic of, it's actually symbolic of how uh, government agencies view rivers and would want to view rivers as static, as completely static entities deprived of their natural course. Farmers, on the other hand, come from having a lived experience of the Yamuna's landscape, which is expressed in a farmer's account. This land, and mind you, proper land, has been the only source of livelihood and, uh, and income for my family for over generations now. From here on, I'll be taking a deeper dive into how MKT farmers have been able to um, seasonally adjust with Yamuna's landscape, um, majorly across seasons. Coming on to part three of my answer, so the method that I've used to collect data include uh, oral narratives, sketchy Google Earth maps because I really did not know too much about OSM uh, maps, and a few uh, photographic evidence to give a sense of the space. Um, the first finding pertains to how MKT farmers have accommodated with reverse changing course as per season. Now the green patch um, in the map on the left is the original site of the farmers during recent dry seasons. Uh, during monsoons, the western banks almost, uh, it completely submerges under flood waters. As a result, the farmers' um, uh, livelihood as well as, uh, as well as housing seriously gets affected during the two monsoon months in Delhi, extending from mid-July to late September. Uh, now, um, on, on having, uh, Due, due to the floods, the farmers uh, actually move their hutments, uh, which are actually made from very simple materials like wooden log, plastic wraps, uh, and small bricks to an elevated close by uh, area. Um, talking about their livelihood, uh, the farming practices actually stop during monsoon months. Uh, farmers, interestingly, have been able to figure out fishing potential uh, uh, on a patch that is very close to this space on the eastern banks of the river. Having learned about when the barrage on the north opens and closes its gates, they have been able to understand that the uh, inflow of fresh water into Delhi, which carries with it several species of fish, and to, in order to supplement family income, a lot of fishing happens uh, around this eastern uh, bank, which is represented in, I'm not sure if it's visible, but it's represented in a, as a pink patch on the eastern side of the river. Um, I can skip this. Talking about my second research finding, now it's not very difficult to understand that a river changes in its physical um, form with every monsoon, but what is also more interesting to see is that these dynamic landforms actually become sites of equally dynamic social interaction. 
For instance, the map on left, so 2000 monsoons is considered to be one of the harshest monsoon uh, years uh, in the recent past for Delhi. Now we can see that the MKT farmers have in fact been losing gradually uh, the brown patch of land, uh, the brown patch of land due to the change in river's natural course. On a separate point, not only are um, these, uh, not only are landforms subtracted from Yamuna's landscape, but various new landforms also are added to Yamuna's landscape across season. So when we consider, for example, the map on the left, uh, we see coming up of land masses within Yamuna's waters as a result of water, river waters carrying silt and sediments from upstream areas during rains. Now these sediments collect on, uh, they attach to the riverbed and over time result in these kind of river islands which are actually locally called tapus. Now these tapus are re represented in brown patches. Uh, these tapus were actually formed within a year from 2013 floods. Now the Tapus are an interesting case of urban commons actually in a city like Delhi where common property resources are fastly depleting. Uh, various kinds of social activities are structured around tapus uh, on account of carrying a lot of silt uh, and uh, the nature of soil being very sandy or reti in Hindi. Uh, this soil is considered very good for the production of seasonal vegetables like cucumbers etc. Now farmers also have devised very interesting ways to decide who controls these urban commons, um, these tapus. They actually have a draw system. Uh, they have a draw system to basically decide which society farmers gets to, um, gets to have control over these tapus and for what period of time. The tapus are also used as grazing lands for animals. <coughs> Now coming on to concluding remarks, uh, my, although I'm aware that it's a very micro site, I'm talking about a very small community around Yamuna, but the scale of questions that they pose are actually big. My research reveals Yamuna to be a dynamic and fluid landscape in terms of social relationships as well as its physical form. However, in institutional maps, a clear demarcation between the blue of the waters and the green of the expanse only presents an aggregated version of social realities in the space. Uh, seasonal adjustments are uh, extremely important to take into account when we talk about a living entity as a river. Um, details about such community relations can contribute to policy making processes uh, because, um, because it's essentially about making policies that are more organic to the landscape and not imposed on a river from the top. It also helps us, helps us to think about the rhetorics of contemporary river beautification plans which actually seem very cosmetic and synthetic when we consider these seasonal relationships between a community and the river. Talking about my second concluding, conclusion, um, it's actually expressed best in the narrative of a farmer who has been one of the oldest members of the MKT site. He says that nobody has ever asked me, how should Yamuna look like? When we talk about, and this question, this is actually a question on how can we make mapping more inclusive um, to have representation of such communities. When, we, when the OSM community talks about building communities, some questions are extremely important to take into account. Who gets a seat on these tables and what is the stake that they bring to the table? Uh, do we equate river-based dependency with river-based recreation, for example, are some questions that command public attention because they are about the idea of inclusive city. I'd like to end my presentation to invite inputs from the mappers and geographers. How can mapping be used to represent and visualize dynamic and like dynamic data that I've collected uh, in my work? Thank you.